by watching this video, you're doing your research. Yo, what is up all you Stone Cold Ill Maddox Funky Monkeys, King Kongs of Aquariums, this is Aqua Funk, and today I got a very, very unpopular opinion on whether or not the African Peacock Cichlid is or is not a good choice for beginning fish keepers. You definitely gonna wanna stick around for this one. Oh, I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there with something to say, and that's fine. Please put it in the comments, let everybody know both sides of the story. That's what Aquafunk is all about. After doing an extensive, comprehensive comparison between keeping African cichlid peacocks, I said, I said African cichlid peacocks, African peacock cichlids, and comparing them to other fish that I've kept for the first time, I gotta admit, if you were to ask me if the African peacock cichlid was a good choice for beginners, I have to say yeah. <gasps> what? Despite their reputation for being a very difficult fish to keep, um, which I don't agree with. I don't agree with at all. I think the color, the availability, the size, the idea of what people want for their first time aquarium, I feel like this fish fits the bill to the T. By the end of this video, I'm gonna guarantee you this. That fish that's been bouncing around you, should I do it, should I not do it, I don't know, people say this, people say that, you gonna wanna do it. The good thing about that question, how many African peacock cichlids can you keep together, is African cichlids um, are the only fish recommended to overstock. Every person you will ever meet that has kept African cichlids, African peacock cichlids, whatever, will tell you, pack that tank, pack it, just cram them in there. Next question is how big of an aquarium do you need? Now that also ties into how many fish you can keep in there. I suggest no less than a 55. Bigger is always better, but for the average person, a 55 is easily attainable and it's big enough for you to go ahead and have that full um, amount of fish that you want it. But one other thing, they like a lot of water movement. So when it comes to filtration, go big. Find old filters, throw them on there. Filter it way more than it needs to. If you could put the filters across the whole back, do that. They like the water movement, and that water movement actually helps clean the tank. It, it turns up the stuff at the bottom so that the filter can get it. So that's a good thing. Now, when you do have your 55 and you have decided on getting African cichlids, you're gonna wanna get more over time. So when you add African cichlids to an already established tank with African peacock cichlids in it, here's a little tip or a couple little tips to help you do that. Tip number one, always add at least three at a time. All right, the reason why is African cichlids are very territorial. That means they find their little spot and they don't like new people coming around, right? So when you add three at a time, that's, they can't really pinpoint or, or, or pick on just one. They kind of go after this one and then they get, they lose interest. Then they go after this one and then a new one passes and they go after, they go after, they, they just, you know what I'm saying? They're just like a cat with a whole bunch of people just shaking keys at it. Another thing you can do is add food. That, that way, when you do add the fish to it, they're not, look, look, these African cichlids, they, they, they're kind of like inmates, you know what I mean? Um, the new fish and everybody. So listen, let me take just a little moment of your time to tell you about www.nosaltbp.org. This is a website ran by a beautiful hearted woman that's all about saving people's lives. She's out there on Skid Road doing selfless acts, helping everyday people who are, many, many of them are veterans on her own dime. It's definitely www.nosaltbp.org is a legit charity. So if you want to help her out, there is a donation section there and it is tax deductible. So you don't have to worry about that. Your money's going to the right place. High blood pressure and heart related illnesses affects pretty much everybody. Whether you have the issue or not, somebody you know, somebody in your family is dealing with it. The things you learn there could save your life or possibly save the life of someone close to you. Here on Skid Row, how many people did we see, Vice President? 75. You know what I mean? Um, the new fish and everybody gets to, you know, just, you know, pay all the attention to them. Add some food in there. That way, these these established African cichlids that you had prior to have something else to pay attention to, right? Turn off your lights. Turn them off. Leave them off for the day until the next day. That way, you know, like I said, if they can't really see the newbies in the cell, um, they may not pay too much attention to it. My personal favorite is the one where you rearrange your tank. Now, I'm always sticking my hands in the tank doing something silly. I just, I don't know, it's just my thing, all right? So, like I said a little while ago, African cichlids are very territorial. They're not too smart either. Come on, let's be real, no, ain't, they're fish. Ain't no fish really all that smart. So what you do is you rearrange the decorations in your tank so that the established fish lose that territorial aspect because they feel like they're in a whole new environment so that they can go ahead and, and pick their hierarchies um, from scratch. With the new fish um, being slid right in the mix without anybody really noticing. 
how big do African peacock cichlids get? Well, um, that's a good question. You want to buy a tank for me? You need know how big they get. I, you know what? Four to six inches is about what I always see. The males are going to be a little bit bigger. Um, and like a lot of other fish, the males are the ones that are more colorful. But four to six inches is fair. When you're talking about the African peacock cichlid, there's a bunch of different types of African cichlids. But we're talking about the African peacock cichlid today. Why are these jokers so damn aggressive anyway, right? Well, I'm not a fishologist. Right? But I do, one of my favorite things about keeping fish is observing them and thinking about all the aspects of what they do and why. So I came to the conclusion, I think, when I think about fish that come from a lake, and African peacock cichlids come from Lake Malawi, um, it's an enclosed system. So what happens is, is whatever's there is there. There's nothing coming downstream um, as far as food goes. Um, so when you have fish that live in a lake, and if you look at other lake fish, a lot of them are very territorial because that's all there is. They got to keep what they can to survive. So I feel like um, lake fish in general are more territorial because um, there's no change in their environment, you know? And if there is a change in the environment, that little bit of territory that they have is very important, right? They have to fight away all the other fish. It's not like all the other fish can go somewhere else down river, right? So they have to keep what they got. So I feel like lake fish in general um, are more territorial aggressive and 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 um combative than other fish not to mention the right to breed the boss of the tank that's what you call the the, the fish that runs the tank and with african peacock cichlids they'll change from time to time one will run the tank tank boss and maybe another fish will you know get a little bit bigger a little bit faster and overtake the tank boss and then he's a tank boy. So there's always a switch in the hierarchy. Now, I'm not going to tell you that there is not going to be no depths. There's going with every fish you get, there's going to be depths. I don't care if you're getting guppies or tetras or angelfish or oscars. If you got enough fish in there, somebody's going to kill somebody. It's going to happen. It's just a fact. So when it comes to African sickness, people, oh, they kill each other. Well, all fish do at some point. It, it just, they do, you know? Maybe not so much with the guppies and stuff like that, but they will eat their babies. So. All right, so you got these fish, right? You got them in your tank. Um... Your decor. Good thing about African peacock cichlids is they don't need a whole lot of plants. In fact, um, because they mess the soil up so much, real plants are not really recommended. I like using fake plants because I can clean them. And when I add new fish, it's not a big big deal to move them around. So I get fake plants. I go to Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Walmart, whatever, get those silky plants, put them in there, get some rocks. They really like rocks, um, big boulder rocks. You put them in there. And boom. There you go. You got an African cichlid tank. If you've kept Oscars, and Angels, and Central American, South American, you'll notice that their foods are really protein heavy foods. A lot of meaty type stuff. With African cichlids, African peacock cichlids, not so much, you got to change it up. Cause if you feed those particular fish the same foods that you feed the um, New World cichlids, New World being you know Central and South North America, you will end up um, giving them bloat. It's kind of like, um, how can I explain this? They're all backed up. What you have to do, right? is feed them a very varied diet. You want to throw some meat in there. You want to throw a lot of veggies in there. That veggie, that veggie matter will, will help things, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll unstop the plumbing. You know what I mean? It'll help things flow. If not, you're going to end up getting medications and having to do different things to get. So the best thing to do is get yourself a good African say Get a couple. I never recommend just doing one type of food, one brand of food. I recommend getting multiple brands of food. You put like three different brands of food in, in a Ziploc container, shake it up, boom, there you go. You got a great African cichlid mix that has different vitamins and, and uh, nutritional values from different companies, and it all is good for your fish. You don't have to feed these fish every day. You really don't. In fact, I, I don't suggest you do. I suggest you feed them every other day. That does a couple of things. One is that um, keeps your water um, from getting too dirty because your fish ain't doodling all the dang on time. The food isn't falling in cracks, rotting. And because they've went a day without eating, as soon as you put the food in there, it all gets gobbled up. It's not extra laying around and doing all kinds of silly stuff to your water. So I suggest you feed them twice a day. Plus, when you feed them twice a day, they get real amped up. So when you feed them, that's exciting. You get choom, 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 choom. It's exciting. That's what you want to see. That's what you want when you feed your fish. You want them to love it and devour it. And that's exactly what they do. These fish like to um, attack and stay close to the top when they eat. They will pick at the sand, but I don't necessarily like foods that fall to the bottom unless you have bottom feeders to eat up that food. Which brings me to my next um, topic, is what other fish can you put with African peacock cichlids? Well, you can put 
Membuna cichlids, which is another cichlid that comes from the same lake. A lot of people don't like to do that, mix the types when they have doing Africans. Um, but you know, any Membunas, Haps, Peacocks, you can pretty much throw them all in there. I would not, if you saw a fish that said African cichlid, Lake Tanganyika, don't, I wouldn't necessarily do that. The only ones I've seen do that are the frontosis because they get big, but a lot of Tanganyika fish stay little. And these fish will eat any, just like any other. See, that's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm getting at. These fish are no different. They have the same rules as any other fish. So I don't know why people dog them so much. Like any other fish, if they can fit in their mouth, they're gonna put it in there. So no little bitty fish, no little bitty fish. But you can put, um, uh, placos in there. A lot of people put bristlenose placos. I'm not a fan of bristlenose placos, so I've never done it. So my go-to placo for um, aggressive fish, you know, you know, bigger size fish, whatever, is the rhino placo. I, I don't, don't, don't get the common placo for $2.99. I'm telling you, don't do it. You're gonna, you're gonna regret it. They get too big. All they do, do it all the time. They just don't do it. Don't. Just, they should ban those fish from pet stores. Common placos should be banned. But you can get a bunch of different placos as long, you know, as, as long as you know they're a beefy type. To be honest with you, these African cichlids don't really mess with Placos too much. So um, that's why I was surprised. I, I was surprised when people told me they use Bristlenose Placos because I always felt like Bristlenose Placos were a little on the wimpy side, but apparently they don't get messed with. Cynodonis catfish are one of the best catfish you can put with African peacock cichlids because, you know, they come from the same place, the same water parameters, eat the same foods, da 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 da, -da. I also am a big fan of the spotted Pimodellus or Pictus or the four-line spotted, the four-line Pimodellus or Pictus. Those are my three... Um, go to catfish. You're gonna be, you're gonna be tempted to get something silly like a red tail catfish. Don't do that. They will kill your African cichlids. Um, stick to the catfish that stay around the eight inch, eight inch size, five to eight inches. Um, that way, they don't really harm your fish, and they're big enough that your fish really won't mess with them. I have a friend of mine that has angels, blood parrots, garamis, Jack Dempsey's fire mouse. He's got some some big old mollies and he has african cichlids in there sharks he also has sharks rainbow sharks every day and he has african cichlids in there i don't suggest doing that eventually those african cichlids are going to get big enough that they, their their light aggression is way too much for these other fish so i'm not going to tell you do not do i suggest not to because you can do what you want it's your tank it's your money you can experiment all you want but in my personal opinion um i don't really i really see eventually all them fish getting taken out these fish can get kind of costly because believe it or not, they may not be like the star of YouTube. You know, they're not the arrow, the arowana. They're not the the, the the stingrays. They're not the betas or the, you know, they're not those fish which really dominate a lot of what you see on YouTube, but they have a very, very strong cult following that will pay the money for the fish. So they do have, you know, a little price tag to them. You're gonna go to the pet store, you're gonna see some up there for eight, fifteen dollars. They're gonna be little, right? And you're gonna be tempted to be like, oh, I'm gonna get those and their colors will come out. But like I said earlier in the video, the males get the color, the females do not. So people want the males. Because people want the males, these fish breeders have to figure out a way to recoup their money because ain't nobody buying their females. So the price kind of is a little bit high. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you, um, the going rate, the going rate for like a fish this big, uh, could be in the ballpark of anywhere to 40 to 60 dollars, depending. Some could be even more. But you're looking at forty to sixty dollars for a fish like four inches. Treat yourself. Splurge a little every once in a while. Spend forty, fifty, fifty dollars on the fish if you really want it. I, I've done it, and I do that blinking thing because I'm cheap and I don't like spending that type of money. So when, when I talk about doing it, it, it gives me a it gives me a twit, a twick. It gives me a, a, a what's it called? Tick. I said a twitch and a tick. It came out twick. <laughs> African peacock cichlids are mouth brooders, and when you have a female and a male, what will happen is the the the, the male, will, the the female will kind of like dig out a little little hole area, find a spot wherever the male will go ahead and squeak 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 squeak, cover them with his man juice. The male will fertilize the eggs, and he'll leave it be. He doesn't stick around. He doesn't worry. But he's a deadbeat dad that way. And the way the mother protects the babies is by scooping up in her mouth, and she'll keep them in her mouth. Until now, now I'm not gonna get into breeding because there's a whole that's a whole different scenario. But just to let you know, um, African cichlids, if you have um, multi-sex, they will interbreed with each other. So just don't don't think you know just because you have this type male and another type female that you know you're not gonna have that issue. You will have that issue. You will have that issue. I've lived all up and down the East Coast, and everywhere I went to, the water is around seven point five to eight in that range, which is great for African cichlids. They like the high pH. If you wanted, if you live somewhere, maybe your pH coming out the tap is a little bit lower, go ahead and get yourself crushed coral. 
um, or anything house. You can throw a whole bunch of shisha, see shells in there and all that calcium will raise the pH. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do to raise the pH. Keep the temperature up to, you know, the high, um, high 70s, low 80s. They like it like that. Hey, baby. <laughs> Everything about the African peacock ciglet is, 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 is a big plus to someone who may make mistakes. So I'm gonna do it. Just do it. That's, that's, that's it. That's all you gotta do. Hey, man, if you enjoyed this content, I got another video right here. I don't know if it's there or there. It's gonna be somewhere on this side or on that side. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Do it. Do it.